with me over the next hour to take your questions. Gillian Keegan, Conservative MP for Chichester. Lord Charlie Faulkner, former Labour Justice Secretary. Mark Fox from the Business Services Association. And Michael Walker, editor at Navarra Media. Let's go to Molly, who's a new caller in Gatwick. Hello, Molly. Hi, Ian. How are you? Hi, very well. What would you like to ask? Um, so, your guests have spoken a lot about um, parliamentary arithmetic um, in terms of the new Prime Minister getting um, deal or no deal through. Um, but surely if the MPs had just voted based on what the constituencies voted for in the referendum, then we wouldn't have this problem. So I wanted to ask the MPs um, why they feel they should be able to vote based on their opinion rather than their constituencies. That's an interesting question, which we get, we get we talk about a lot actually on the program. Now, Gillian, I think I'm right in saying your constituents voted leave. Yep. Um, and you, I've voted to leave three times now with that you, deal. You didn't in the referendum, though. I didn't in the referendum, no. but, but I've respected the democracy, uh, the democratic you, decision. And you, three times I've voted to do leave. Do you now. feel a sense that? you need to because there are a lot of mps that haven't voted the way their constituents voted whichever whichever side of this the argument is on do you feel a pressure to vote in a particular way because your constituency voted that way i didn't feel a pressure because to me if you're going to have a democratic vote um we have one of the oldest and most respected democracies in the world and we um ought not to mess around with that and if you have asked people to vote and you've said you're going to respect that vote and there's a lot of discussion about whether we should have done it or not whether we did it in the right way um you know i wasn't in parliament at the time but if we've done it then i firmly believe that we must um we must enact that 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 decision now that does not mean enacting it in a way which is you know it's been completely hijacked now by uh, the brexit party and whoever else wants to jump into the mix saying unless it looks like this 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 and this none of which was talked about at all at the ref time of the referendum that they're hijacking and they're kind of you know saying unless it looks like this it's not proper brexit no that's not true but you know this has to be respected i think it's 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 for me it, it wasn't a question it, if it, even if my seat had voted to remain the country as a whole mm. as the united kingdom voted to leave so that was the basis on which we went into this and i think it's 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 we have to we have to respect it and so therefore i've changed my position because <coughs> i respect democracy and i i do believe though we can leave in a sensible way that actually if, if we had an honest conversation, you could do this in a way that would be fair and reasonable, would protect businesses and jobs. And actually, you could even include some of the concerns that younger people have about what, a, what, what their future would look like. You could include all that in the f future relationship and you could do it reasonably. Uh, and Michael Walker, in a sense, you could argue, I don't want to put words into your mouth, but Jeremy Corbyn's position is, is almost that, trying to deliver the result of the referendum or respecting the result of the referendum, even though he knows his own party, but certainly party members and many voters don't agree with that. Yeah, well, I mean, I think I think that is his position. I think going back to the the question itself, I mean, there's two issues. One, which is that MPs aren't just delegates, they're also representatives, so they get to make up their own mind. Well, they aren't delegates at all, actually, if uh, you constitutionally. Yeah, I suppose they're, they're just representatives. But going back to the issue before about a second referendum and, and why I think it shouldn't just be seen as trying to reverse the re result, but also solving a constitutional problem, is that the mandate that 2016 gave the MPs was to leave the European Union. But every MP is quite correct when they say there was no mandate for any particular kind of Brexit. And so they're within their rights to say when people voted leave, they didn't vote for this because people did vote for something very vague. And that's not to, obviously to say that people who voted How for it were doing vote? anything wrong. Uh, I voted remain. Um, but you're I, sounding a bit leavey. Well, look, I, I don't think whether or not we leave the EU is the be all and end all of, of British politics. Um, I think that it's important that politicians and commentators, everyone is very clear that all positions in this, well, all reasonable positions, as long as the plans are laid out, are legitimate. Why I'd like to see a second referendum is not to necessarily reverse the result, but because referendums should only happen when the plans are already drawn up. So the problem here is that there's been a referendum on a question where it was designed because people thought the status quo was going to be maintained and there was no plan for, for Brexit that was written down. If there is another referendum, what needs to happen is there needs to be two envelopes, one of them is you send to the civil servants to say we're going to remain. And one of them is you send to the civil servants, which has a full plan for how we are going to do Brexit. That needs to be public. Uh, and, and there needs to be no role for MPs after that. So I think this idea of you give a vague mandate to MPs and then expect them to come out with something 
is was always going to be incredibly problematic. And that's, I think that's, that's the job of government, though, to implement decisions like that. Well, the job of government and the job the of fact M- that they haven't been able to do it is almost by the by. Well, the job of MPs is to vote for what what they think is right and what and what they believe in, unless there is a mandate, right? And here there is a mandate to leave the European Union. But any MP, be that a Labour MP who says we want to respect the result of the referendum, but we think uh, the mandate, we the option that we want, which is in line with the mandate that 2016 gave was a soft Brexit. Then you've got people in the ERG okay. who say, we want to respect um, the mandate by doing a hard but Brexit. But the withdrawal agreement is the same in every single subsequent deal. And what we're stuck on is just passing the withdrawal agreement. So actually, the withdrawal agreement could have passed. It doesn't change for any flavour of Brexit. Um, Charlie Ford, do you think this, taking up uh, Michael's point there, do you think this was inevitable in, all along? There was no plan. The, the government was almost proud not to have a plan. They didn't have any civil servants working on a plan before the referendum as they revealed George Osborne revealed in this studio which I was horrified by um, and the fact that you have a Remainer parliament the fact that you have a civil service that effectively we all know would prefer to stay in you have a remain dominated cabinet mm-hmm. it's always, always inevitable you isn't don't it? Know that at all. I, I absolutely you do don't know, know that, that at all. I absolutely you do know just that. Say that about well I was asking service. Charlie Mark so let him answer uh, I don't think this is inevitable I think all that you say is right that there's a Remainer parliament but I think uh, what Gillian is saying is broadly correct the MPs have approached this on the basis that we've lost on the referendum we've therefore got to give effect to it because because as Michael rightly says, there's a mandate that goes beyond whatever you think the right thing to do is. And I think we have, as a political group, made an absolutely monumental mess of it, both in the eyes of the public and in the eyes of the outside world beyond the United Kingdom. I don't believe it's beyond saving, though I am genuinely worried that the way that uh, Mr Hunt and Mr Johnson are conducting themselves makes it less likely that we're going to get a deal. Uh, I think Michael is ultimately wrong and, and quixotic when you say when you say, "Oh, look, let's have in one envelope the precise terms of which we're going to leave," and it's yay or nay to that. I don't know if you've noticed, but the Commons are proving incredibly difficult to agree on anything, and the idea that they could agree what the precise terms of the leave proposition would be seems to me to be impossible. The way it should be working is the country voted to leave. In effect come what may that doesn't mean no deal they trusted the politicians Mm. to work out a sensible way of doing it and my god have the politicians messed up and it's very difficult to see unless the government the new government pulls something out of a hat that this parliament the commons will be regarded as a total bunch of failures. All the right. problem's Ma- a hung parliament. Trying no, to do it in a hung, hung parliament. parliament. No, it's not well, just that. It is a failure to agree. <laughs> and the failure to agree whether you're hung or not in relation to it will hung you will not be for, you will not be forgiven let, 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 for the fact that you're a different party. Let's say from Mark Fox. I've he, done the right he, thing. He clearly wants to have I'm a, sure you've done the right thing. He clearly thing. wants to have a go at me. Yeah. But I, I I want you to go back to the original question first of all about MPs being mandated by their constituents. That was effectively the point that Molly was making. Well, we all know that that is not the correct understanding of what the parliamentary democracy is about. It's also why referendums are just antithetical to how we run our political system in this country. They just don't sit. Only weak leaders call referendums. And if you look at the pattern of referendums, it's because a prime minister... Tony Blair wasn't a weak leader. When he became prime minister, he called all sorts of referendums. He was fulfilling John Smith's legacy, but that's a different point on devolution. Harold Wilson... David Cameron, they called the referendums on Europe because they were in a position of extreme weakness with party division. So the whole thing, the beginning of the whole thing, was out of a huge sense of political weakness. The way we resolve it in the end is if we think that Parliament is not in line with the wishes of the people, we have general elections. Twice, twice in this recent period, we should have had a general election, arguably, when the government lost that vote by that uh, serious amount mm. and so on. And the real problem here is the Fixed Term Parliament Act, which I don't want to be get on the wrong side of Lord Faulkner, but he's a really wicked thing to have put. I know, isn't it? Right? No, no, that I know. Lot that did it. But I don't want to get into a sort of... Right, OK. Yeah. But it's a really damaging thing, and it should be. Right. Because we need to change the composition of the House of Commons till it reflects what people want to see done. So what did I say that you were objecting to? Oh, because now? you said we all know that the civil service is remainery. Well, we do. You don't I mean, know, is, is, that, is that a matter of... 
debate? It's not, a record, it's not a matter of record, but what you've found is people have taken these labels and it's like the, the first question, you know, do you have to be a Brexiteer? You mm. know, until three years ago, I had no idea that my best friend I've known for 40 years was a Leaver and I was a Remainer. None of us ever thought about life in these terms. It's Still ridiculous. your best friend? She is, and Fantastic. she's Leaver and I'm Conservative. Fantastic. There's, there's some That's things, what we like to but, hear. But, you know, this, is, this has become ridiculous now. We're all being defined by something we never even gave a moment's thought about. Unless you're a Eurosceptic and you made it your life's mission or your Farage, the rest of us did not wake up in the morning mm. thinking about this. They did. It wasn't even a thing that defined us. Well, you are absolutely right on that. I, I had to um, slightly correct my colleague James O'Brien on Twitter the other day when he said that I was a lifelong Brexiteer. I said, mate, I was speaking for the European movement back in the 1980s. I didn't decide to vote Leave until the uh, abortive negotiations in 2016. I And I'm, I'm sure I come across as a sort of hard-headed Brexiteer. But you do. I, you do. But <laughs> Gillian, Gillian, Gillian is right. This, this I, I mean, apart from the Eurosceptics, I mean, you knew that Bill Cash was very against yeah. the European Union. This is life's work. But most members of parliament didn't have a definition politically that came from their position on that and certainly members of the public didn't.